Let's get it. Table for one, if you oblige. There's always room. For mana two six, Tom Kench, round start. Create an un an acquired taste in hand. Level up. I've captured three plus units. When I level up, obliterate my captured enemies and release my allies. What the hell? Devour a friend or foe to clear the board. Tom Kench swallows an enemy unit. It strikes him, then he captures it. Okay, so you play this. Tom Kench will saw the uh, unit, but it will strike him. So if Tom Kench doesn't survive, he will capture it. So Tom Kench is essentially going to be getting damaged by playing this kind of strategy. You'll have to maintain him keeping him alive. But he is going to detain so many foes. Oh, how obnoxious. Oh, the synergy, dude. The combo, they're showing the hunting fleet with the narwhal. Lol. Uh, Bayou Brunch. An ally captures another ally and gains the captured ally's stats. Okay. Yo. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Because then he'll get st striked by the Sejuani. Come along. There's room for oh, we're leveling up! Round start, create an acquired taste in hand. Attack, obliterate my captured enemies and release my allies. Wow. So he'll be permanently gaining those stats, right? As he eats allies. That is insane! <laughs> That's incredible. Wow. Wow, that's an amazing champion. Um, very, very aesthetically pleasing, very thematic, just... In terms of power level, like, I don't know, what a crazy mechanic. You are kind of like all inning Tom Kench, similar to like how you all in Fiora, right? But it's not exactly winning you the game. Still very pog. So, shall we dive deeper into these cards and have a look? Let's talk firstly about Tom Kench. I'll come over the other cards in a second. You guys can see them there. I haven't quite seen the other uh, cards that weren't revealed. So Calm Town Kench is a 4 mana 2 6. At the round start, we get the an acquired taste. The acquired taste, Tom Kench swallows an enemy unit. It strikes him and then he captures it. It's funny how like the acquired taste has like the, f is that the fleeting symbol? Yeah, I think the, the acquired taste would be fleeting, right? So you can't just stack them up in hand. Makes sense, even though it's not written on Tom Kench's actual card. It is indeed a fleeting card. So when you play it, so what happens here is Tom Kench with the acquired taste will get striked by the enemy he tries to eat. So if you're trying to eat something obviously bigger than Tom Kench's current Tom Kench's current HP, it's going to kill it. So your opponent has some interaction there where you would go to attempt to use the acquired taste, and then they'll simply play like a buff or something, and then strike Tom Kench, most likely leading in a kill. Because I imagine with the wording here that Obviously, if Tom Kench is dead, you won't be capturing it. So the idea with Tom Kench here is that you want to be building a deck around Tom Kench that this kind of gets into the field, and as long as you continue to protect it, gets an insane amount of protection uh, generation, uh, sorry, gets an insane amount of value and kind of acts as a win condition in itself. You know, we have like the Bastion, we have plenty of cards like that in Targon to protect it. Definitely, it's going to require some very interesting deck building, but it seems like a very cool card. And, um, you know, usually every champion does find a home. However, some champions do tend to be less than powerful. I think Tom Kench looks very interesting. And it's simply a card, I think it's going to require a lot more experimentation than, than just what meets the eye. This is a very unique card. The effects are a little bonkers. There's a lot going on here, but I'm going to say Tom Kench generally has some good potential.
Like, because you don't necessarily have to be playing the acquired taste if you're not set up in the right position. But you're not exactly gaining that much value from him. So what else do we have here? We saw Tom Kench's Bayou. Just to repeat on what that card did, an ally captures another ally and gains the captured ally's stats. So these are like support cards for protecting Tom Kench. And then inevitably, when like Tom Kench flips at the round start, get the acquired taste, as we said, and then obliterate my captured enemies and release my allies. So not only like will you play Tom Kench's Bayou Brunch, which is his signature spell, which is very suitable, he will also get those stats and then you'll release the allies and have a ton of value while Tom Kench still maintains all those stats. So some of the other cards here that we did not see is going to be Wise Fry. This is a six mana three eight with Overwhelm and Vulnerable. So he's vulnerable himself. Okay, deal one to all other allies and grant me plus one for each of them. In general, uh, I would have to assume as we build a Tom Kench deck, I don't know about this card, like it's six mana, right? Yeah, I don't know if um, I would put this into my Tom Kench deck because I'd be more focused on not going super wide on the board, but kind of like protecting the Tom Kench. Definitely a supportable card. I, I assume it wants to be paired up with Tom Kench in some way. I think it's going to be pretty unreasonable to assume that you have a board stick constantly. So I wonder if with Tom Kench's Bayo Brunch, by the way, if when we capture the allies and we release them, they're going to be summoned back, right? So this is the whole theme that we see with some of these new build water units that have damage on them when they are released by tom kench you'll keep those stats and then that unit will come back at full hp we also have a burst speed spell a shakedown deal two to an ally and grant enemies grant two enemies vulnerable i mean i compare this a lot to giving all enemies or granting all allies challenger for three mana. This is a one mana burst speed spell that has deal to an deal two to an ally, which could be relevant in a lot of situations. And then granting all enemies vulnerable. I mean, I see what they want you to do here. Like they want you to play Tom Kench, swallow all your allies, release them with lots of HP, like big beefy units that just don't mind about taking damage. All these cards look very cool. I would have to say that. Tom Kench looks really interesting and we'll have to wait and see in playtesting what this does. Like in the current metagame, we have mid-range decks to somewhat, people playing like Aurelian Soul with like kind of big units, ramp decks. Like how does Tom Kench match up against like Trundle? Like for example, your opponent plays Trundle on curve and you have Tom Kench on the field. Like Tom Kench threatens the big decks to an extent. Like the ones that ramp and then play something on turn five. Tom Kench existence in the metagame would mean it's not as simple to slap down big beefy units when your opponent's playing Tom Kench and they can use the acquired taste to swallow your trundle on curve. Yeah, I can see Tom Kench being pretty good at doing that. I can also see Tom Kench being really annoying against aggro decks, actually. Like Tom Kench, Tom Kench itself is a pretty good anti-aggro tool, actually. Like let's say you curve out and you play Tom Kench against another aggro deck. Like this is this is a pretty good anti build water Noxus, mostly like Twisted Fate GP or Misfortune GP. It looks pretty good, just like yeah, eating your opponent's units every turn. You also need to heal him up though. Okay, so we can safely assume that Soraka is coming out in this expansion as well, and she's going to be bringing in some healing synergy. Uh, I can I can see Tom Kench and Soraka pairing up similar to how Diana and Leona are pairing up. Yeah, these cards look pretty cool. I don't think there's much else I can say about them. These cards look very interesting in terms of their potential. Who knows, man? We'll have to wait and see. All right, thanks for watching, guys. And I'll be seeing you tomorrow.